Legacy Model VP. Naku, lakad mo. Lakad mo na lang. Lakad mo na to. Gorilla, okay, they pick up a Night Stalker, which... I mean, as far as defensive heroes goes, there's definite... Ooh, wait. Mars gets the first, but over on Fonte. In the tree line here, with a nice spear plus bulwark. And they are gonna turn on the Lich. Ooh, ooh, he may have overstepped there, but he's gonna be fine. Mars isn't gonna get out the God's Review, because he did that. He's probably gonna get light struck, air raid under the tower. So he wants to make sure he can actually catch the Dina. And he does catch the Dina, but... In the process, getting himself Mirana arrowed. Young PH gets the shield crash off, but doesn't have a fairy fire to keep himself alive. That's gonna be Young PH dying. Dolphin. He's a doom. He prints a ton of money. That's why I said killing him would have been really sweet for the Lina. Because that's actually a lot of money for her. And they are gonna kill the doom, but instead with a Mirana plus the lit. Don't be angry. To the grasslands of my home. Down go enemy's money for his take to peace like this. Really, really good. And now in comes the Monkey King. Looking to run down one of the two at least. Disruptor already dead. And now KSH on his doom is gonna follow. 2k gold lead for the side. Easy why he comes on in following up the Mirana arrow and just making an instant dead. Three good AoE. Mirana gets glimpsed into his spear and gets instantly executed. First damage, another thing that Yangos Yangos grab does really well. Mars goes on down while the chain frost luckily not bouncing. You need to commit more when you're trying to look for solo kills anyhow. Arrow, barely off the mark on the disruptor. Disruptor gets slowed and right click for a ton of damage by the Night Stalker though. And that is gonna be Gorilla once again. Like, in every 1v1 scenario, Gorilla are just so much better suited. Like, in every. E I know it's not that greedy of a Doom build. Like, you're not 100% focused on farming for the position 1. Yang PH though, he goes on down. To the Lina right click spam. And now initiation of the Lina. There is the Doom, there is the one man spear, so I think Lina is just dead. Night Stalker comes on in, wants support kill here, will get that one. Out comes the chain thrust. And it's just gonna lead to a easy look. Yangon are trying to fight this head on as Lich scouts them out with the Glimmer Cape, sets up a long range arrow on the Rubik, and with the Glimmer Cape. Ooh. Rubik, he was kind of half stuck in that Mars wall and the Lina projectiles, they were acting a bit weirdly there. But Rubik is gonna go down now, Monkey King gets zoomed up. Chain Frost not bouncing anymore and with Pangolier coming in, it looks like Gorilla, they may have actually overcommitted to this. Lina, yeah, she wanted those hits on the mark. Everybody charging bottom, but the tier 1 has already dropped. And now they need to find a really good initiation for... Yeah. Oh, Yang got not to just turn around the key fight because everybody is in position, but there is a huge silence from the Night Stalker, preventing the disruption from pressing any buttons. In comes the Chain Frost, doing a bunch of bounce, but everybody has the BKB available. Doom now on the Night Stalker after Lich has gone down. Rubik and Disrupt already dead, but those are just supports. Doom is gonna die for that one though. And nobody really able to commit because there's the smoke currently running right at Gorilla. And Monkey King able to get out his own BKB. Right clicking the Doom for so much damage, gets off the Jingu, Z-Rain already died on the Rubik and Disruptor, he's just sitting on the sidelines on the fight, having a Night Stalker fly in his face. And that has been an issue for Yango Galacticos, because they were supposed to hold on, I think, at least a while longer than this game is currently looking to end at. But one of the big reasons for that, of course, is they did not get those three-man static storms, followed up by three-man Rolling Thunder that we talked about during the draft. Because Pangolier, the second this Rolling Thunder ends, if he's still there, he is dead and he knows that, so he gets himself out. It's just... Instead, they get scouted out by the Night Stalker. Night Stalker now blinking forward, running down the Rubik. He gets done in a bit of an unlucky fashion, but Rubik is still gonna die. Easy why he's having great and use that a lot anymore, right? I know the leap is really funny, and it is kind of usable, but I don't think Vukong is strong enough to want to do that right now. 
AT decides it's a good idea to man fight the monkey again. Monkey King says, well, you wanted to man fight me, now come here while, while I keep getting my right clicks on you. Monkey King will finish up the tower. And that does lead to him being in a bit of trouble. Nice spear forward, however, Mars is going to die for that. So I'm reasonably sure this one is going to be Megas at least. Because Doom, this is your position one unnecessary. Just don't stall the game unnecessarily. Night Stalker is going to initiate on the disruptor again, and the disruptor goes on down. Yeah, this Night Stalker, he's been such a big problem just by shutting down whichever is the biggest of these support ultimates. Without this TZY Night Stalker, I do not think this game would have been anywhere near the smooth once has Gorilla. And speaking of smooth Gorilla, they are getting their own backline jump done. Guo Guo is going to be the only one dying and they do kill off some real fancy ship. Lina has to buy back, but it's too little today, yeah. There is... See, that's the issue. I've talked about Lina needing to be protected, and the second they don't protect the Lina, suddenly all of their damage has vanished. There is some very clearly need a win here. The only way they can guarantee to qualify is winning every game today, from here on out. Oof. That is a nasty fissure. Snapfire able to leap down off that high ground though and Lan, can he still get first blooded or is his team able to save him? Nope, he can get first blooded, very much so, by the side of Gorilla. Not the start Yang or Galactus we're hoping for at all. If it wasn't for that really nasty fissure shutting them off, I think that was easily Yangon's first blood. And they did roam there for a reason. Now, nice ice shards blocking two of them in. Lich, awfully low health and undying. He can tank this for days. At level 1, he is just such a powerhouse. AT. Doing his best to stand his ground here. And what a start to a game. But yeah, I do kind of just gonna be nuking supports whenever he needs farm. And that's the point where Lashrek will no longer be able to keep up with him. Now, if Tusk comes out of the lane genuinely ahead, because he may have more last hits, but usually that means you also had more money to spend on TPs and regen. Oof. I mean, it's not that bad for the sniper, it's not that good for the sniper. Young PH, meanwhile, in the mid lane, with an Earthshaker rotating in, gets caught with a Fissure and dies to the last wreck, finding that follow up stun. Like I said, last wreck, if he hits a stun, he can deal tons of damage from the mid lane. And there is the tombstone. So, Undying, he knows exactly that he has to make the sniper's life a little harder if he does not want to lose the lane. S decides to do just that. Guo Guo, with a beautifully timed decay, is gonna die as well. And now Yang and Galactios, they are. Z Rain getting ran down with a Lash Rack as well as the lid. And that is gonna be one kill. Now, Lan will be the next one following up. Flashback, not quite so tanky though, without that frost shield being available. And that cooldown. Flashback, getting ice sharded, taking the Mortimer skins to the face before his stun can come out. The Lich ultimate bouncing so much, and that looks like KSH is gonna be dead. Oof, so an excellent fight getting taken by Yang and Galacticos. They find all the kills they need. Like I Clockwork, hook shutting into the Lishrak with the battery assault. He is gonna be able to prevent that stun, but not the damage to come out from Lishrak. And Task Snowballs at the Lash as well, but we'll get full rise for that one. Yangon, they lose two heroes. Ooh, Clockwork, hook shots in. It's only gonna hit the engines. It's now gonna go for the Lich, though. Lich in a lot of trouble and Clockwork is going to survive the assassinate. So Primal Beast 
has to finish the job there. The rest of Yangon trying to get themselves support, waiting for Sniper to kind of hit that crucial timing and be online. He already has a Maelstrom, adding a lot to his damage. Tusk is gonna roll at him. Fonte is just gonna go down with the Tombstone Zombies, running him down, plus that Rave Pack. Guo Guo is gonna be the next to fall and undying. He does not have a care in the world. I gotta say, the Yangon Galacticos undying has been such a huge tempo maker, has been securing valuable kills on the Sniper. Sniper going 2 and 3 now. But I was so afraid the sniper would just run away with the game. Instead they do manage to shut him down in time and now reap the rewards for their hard work for that one. TZY. Bot lane, TZY. Getting dived on deep and with the hook shot he cannot move for such a long time. It may be fine, maybe not as he drops the BKB and immediately pulls right the task. Out comes the chain thrust, getting a ton of bounces in. Earthshake, he's almost dead, and one more hit from the Clockwork with that mate is gonna do it. Clockwork now unwittingly frontlining against three people and Sniper with the Assassinate. Almost gets the kill, that left has to come in from the other side. Secure that one, and now Undying is gonna run down TTY as they try to change target. Turn on the Lash now, but Monkey does not get the Jingu off. Smoke up. From the Primal Beast who wants to onslaught in, Lashrack coming in from the back and so much AoE being thrown around. Monkey King though, he has an AoE of his own, is gonna throw down that Wukong, is gonna throw down his own BKB. Roach goes down to the Echo Slam and YP, he gets the Aegis, dies for that one. But it's still an Earthshake who just ruined that really big Aegis for Yang. On Yang on they were finally able to go full aggro mode on their enemies here. Instead their Aegis gets stolen and now in comes the big onslaught. Securing another kill. They did lose their sniper though, so I don't think Gorilla are in more of a position to fight. Lash is just trying to keep himself alive and will be able to do so. Ooh, Monkey King comes in, tries to kill off the Lash, but he gets punished so hard with that pulverized. Monkey King is gonna die for that. At least he still did get the Lash kill, so he got what he came for. But that is a two heroes just for repositioning themselves, resetting the side here, and all of a sudden it is an awkward fight for the side of Gorilla instead that they need to play very carefully but they do kill the task. Take one after another, drag them behind your team and kind of try to kill them up before the next target. Out comes a huge Wukong though, and Lesha he is dealing damage together with a break from the Primal Beast. In comes the Assassinate as well but you cannot fight into the Wukongs. The Monkey King just deals too much damage at this point. And that's gonna be Tusk once again getting shot in by the snap fire and going for a toss back onto the sniper, trying to set up sniper for certain death. Instead, though, young PH is gonna die for that. Tombstone drop under the tower, not the greatest move from undying, but. He is doing a good job keeping himself alive as Snapfire comes in to help out a little bit and clockwork. Oof. Clockwork does the tanking while Monkey King does the killing and I mean you do lose your clockwork for that but you've got your Monkey King double and you've got this guy even more fat. Now it looks like TZY could be in a bit of trouble but I think it's gonna be more than a bit at this rate. Nice follow up echo though. Double kill for the Earth Shaker. Choose. Maybe another sick onslaught play? Nope, too late. There's a snowball on the BK beat up Primal Beast. TZY, he's just gonna run down this task and clockwork, make sure they go away from the rest of his team. And the rest of his team is doing so much work. Lich goes on down, Monkey King comes in, running at the sniper, throws out a huge Wukong's command, and with that double damage rune, what are you gonna do against the Monkey King? Absolutely nothing. Fonte, he so watched his positioning there, so Monkey King couldn't just instant kill him with like a couple of good bounces. But KS8, he still had the remainder of the double damage rune paired with his ultimate, and you saw how hard those Wukongs hit when you were surrounded by them. But that means in total, after this one, Yang can only have two series in which they need 2 0, at least one of them. Or play like, you know, 2 1 once and get super lucky, but that would require perfect outcomes 
in some other matches they have no control over. Dashback now trying to defend the base with everything he's got, but it ended up not being enough. They do lock down the Tusk, but at the cost of Dashback being kicked into the Monkey King. And yeah, KSH is the problem. You cannot go KSH, you cannot really fight this team. You can only give KSH more kills in exchange for your heroes. Monkey King is gonna get pulverized, is taking a ton of damage from the sniper. Clockwork wanted to help out, tries for a hookshot in, but the creeps did just spawn in front of Snows. Monkey King, that is his first life. He needs to be more careful with the second one, with the Echo Slam, with the sniper damage. Are they gonna kill off the Monkey King? Nope, not quite. Instead, Monkey King, he is gonna get himself into Sniper's Melee Rage, and he is gonna start right clicking down Fonte. The damage is not quite enough as Fonte has the BKB. It's gonna be able to survive that. Clockwork would really like to finish that kill. But in comes TZY with BKB of his own, dealing so much damage, but double kill with that spit up from Snapfire. You all saw that I followed the projectile. That is Sniper going down for 80 seconds. A TZY, he tries to get himself out, but no such luck. Oof, if it wasn't for that Snapfire, Ashrek tries to connect with the Shivas, will not. Neither will that spit up from the Snapfire. Tombstone gets protected by a Walrus Punch. Now a nice snowball back. Onto TZY, who has decided to jump in, make some space for his team to reposition. Because he is plenty tanky. But going down, he would be devastating. And Monkey King, he is gonna find TZY. He's gonna kill off TZY with Bloodthorn and everything. Those are some powerful items he's going for, for sure. Flashback goes with the BKB plus the Bloodstone. Good luck fighting in, into him like this. But that was his BKB, so he once again has a target on his back. Nice combo from the Earthshaker though. Clockwork trying to tank the sniper, trying to buy his team some time. He is instead gonna have to blade mail and get up on that high ground. Where's the monkey king when you need him the most? He is coming in. And there is the Wukongs. More of a zoning Wukongs than anything else. Not anymore with the kickback into it though. And that is a good reason for Monkey to have kept his ultimate up as they will now kill off the lash rack. Monkey goes for the ballsy play, gets himself close to the sniper. There is a follow up hook to the sniper, so focused on. Yes, if I kill this monkey, we can still turn this game around. However, good luck killing the monkey. Helps them are on phone and get pissed because it's too small to see. So there you go. Monkey King finds the perfect spot for the Wukongs and sniper forced to force himself out of there. He is gonna be fine, lash rack will be beaten down through that bloodstone though and as long as the Monkey King stays alive, Sniper is also in a lot of trouble with that kick back into the Wukongs and Tusk plus Monkey King, such a strong combo, especially if you pair it with the team fight of an Undying and the damage of the Snapfire ultimate, beautifully dra played and drafted from Yang Yang